Deo, right? Nice to meet you. Pastor Sun? It is your mission to serve God. This I just want to strut and get riding through Atlanta when I got a banish. I just take the 85 to Africa. Why are you listening to this vulgar music? Are you a garage boy? Early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, open your mouth. Early in the morning. Well, thank you for joining us here on the bus today. So tell us a little bit about your role, Julius, in Tasmanian Devil. Uh, it's a father-son story. It's a coming-of-age story, and um, I play this sort of religious zealot. He's a priest, actually, and working at a small church in um, in Texas, a small town in Texas. And he gets word from his wife and son, who are living in Nigeria, that the son has been accepted to college in his town. So, lo and behold, the son arrives, and as you know, kids college-age kids usually want to have the last thing to do with their parents. They just, you want to rebel and find your own voice and, you know, do everything that your parents, especially preacher's kids, you know, they, they're saying about beware of the preacher's daughter. Well, the same goes for the preacher's son. <laughs> so he finds solace actually in comfort and guidance in uh, the, the Black Greek organizations. And he pledges, and the group that he pledges to, the fraternity is called the Tasmanian Devils. So you can imagine as a, a priest seeing your son pledging to the devils is that's where the drama lies. Um, but uh, they st slowly come to go have an appreciation for each other. And we get to look inside the, the Black Greek traditions as well. Yes, so how does Julius balance his relationship with God and his son? Well, that's a great question. God had trouble balancing his relationship with his son as well, as we know. <laughs> He, he sacrificed his son. And uh, Julius also feels like he has to do things to sacrifice. He wants his son to sacrifice things and let go of things. So it's a really, he's almost, you know, very, it's a really tough challenge for him because as a father, he really has to pivot and um, realize that what he's trying to do is actually pushing his son further away. And so he has to shift his tactics, his parenting tactics. Would you have any advice to Julius as a parent on how to guide his son? Uh, well, sometimes you can't lead with a rod. Julius is the kind of person who leads with a rod. Um, and that, you know, that will only instill rebellion. And uh, soon one day that son that you're trying to instill that rod with is going to be trying to take care of you. And if you push them too hard, they won't be there. They'll disappear. So this movie uh, features the Tasmanian Devils, the fraternity. Have you ever been in a fraternity? I have not. I have not. So this was for me a window in to get to see what it's like. Uh, you know, the pledging and, you know, sort of hazing that these kids go through. It's, it's rough. Um, but, you know, they have a rich network and this film was made possible because of that network. Um, Benny Boone and Solomon and Anita both belong to the same fraternity, although they were at school at different times. But it was just the fact that they have that relationship, that connection is what bound them um, to help tell this story. Yeah, it seems like in the story, we see these guys pledging to this fraternity and they had that you know relationship that seemed to kind of be like a lifetime bond. So it's interesting that you mentioned that about the uh, executive producer and how that it came back to make this movie, that lifetime bond that you get from going through all those things together is when you're pledging. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just like, it's like family, really. Um, they, or they, they feel, once you've gone through any sort of collective journey together, you usually are bound for life. And that's what's so great because their connection allowed the story to be told and it's also telling their own story. Uh, Benny talks about how he met, I think his first African student was somebody who had pledged, if I'm getting it correctly, um, through the fraternity. And similar story as to what um, the character goes through in the film, where he had to hide what he was doing from his parents because they wouldn't understand. Wow, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you like audiences to take away from watching this movie? Uh, I think what, for me, it's a real coming of age story. 
and it's a real story about uh, a parent discovering who his son is uh, and having to embrace his son in this new light um, and the struggle and the challenge it is for any parent because you know uh, for parenting I'm a parent myself and the, the biggest heartbreak is when your kid you know <laughs> just does everything that you told him not to do <laughs> But what he's doing is he's, he's done that, but in the same pro process, he's discovered himself. And as a parent, there's nothing greater than to see your, your son or your child come into their own. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us. All the best. All right, you too. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you again for getting the thanks. word out. Thanks. I am still your father. Hmm? I'll beat you back to Africa. Oh, really? Hey, Y'all both can get out of my house with that shit. Hi, my name is Ntare Guma Mbahamwine, and I've just been buzzed. <laughs>